Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Marvel's What If, Episode 8. This one is called What If Ultron 1. I like this episode a lot. Again, I'm really enjoying the continuity and the um, graphics and the animation. The sound, the weight to things, the momentum, it all, it all works for me. So right off the bat, it's an enjoyable episode for me. However, there are a couple of things that kind of annoy me, but I guess it's the nerd comic book role-playing guy I am. So the premise of this is Ultron wins, he gets the vision body, and he's, uh, you know, turns Earth into a nuclear wasteland. And that seems to be the extent of this, in the sense that he's going to broaden his programming and bring order to the universe. So, he'll, um, you know, have to dispatch everybody. Now, I'm a little disappointed that when Thanos shows up, with all the gems Minus the mind gem. They did not do a savvy, um, really uh, ingenuitive Ultron win. It happens in a split second and it just makes me tune out for a second. Like, I get it. You want to make the story move along. You've got Black Widow and Hawkeye, which are great. They're telling the story from the perspective of Earth. You've got the Watcher, and you got to get to things. But Thanos shows up out of the portal, and spoiler alert: well, these things are, um, you know, it's hard to do week to week and the things going on. All right, so spoiler alert: as soon as Thanos shows up, Vision uses the Mind Gem and splits him in half. That's it. Takes the rest of the gems and becomes the Infinity, Ultron, so on and so forth. But I think this was the opportunity to show why Ultron is so dangerous. And you showed it, but you didn't explain it. I wanted a quick quirk or um, maybe a back and forth of, you know, I co uh, computate 17 times faster than you, saying, you know, something that showed. Um, you know, uh, the potential there, but it, it's just like he goes fascinating. It's what's been half. It's always takes the gems. Now that bothers me. However, like I said, I'm enjoying this. You've got some epic fights, characters come in and the heart of the story with Black Widow and Hawkeye. But then, like I said, you're bringing in Miss Marvel. We've got the Watcher and it, it's paced good. It's got, um, some really great effects, and like I said, the animation works. And then there's another little thing that bothers me, is the fact that Ultron's Infinity Gauntlet seems to work, well, the gems seems to work in every universe, because his goal is now tracking down the Watcher as all the gems give him the ability to sense him, and, and is that side plot parallel storytelling where you know the ultron is all the infinite ultron is tracking down the watcher and it's an epic fight and it's awesome there's myriad of realities that are changing or breaking through and i i, I it's something about the gems should work in only one universe or the universe they're from so wouldn't this just be gathering other Infinity Gauntlets and other universes to stop him? And when they reveal what the plan is sort of for this Earth, or the Earth that it's we're talking about here, they're going for a low-tech solution. Um, so Arnim Zola, they're trying to upload. So there's a little bit of that, I don't know, it just doesn't weigh right in my head when I'm watching it. So, those are the only two things. I am glad to know that my suspicions were true, or, you know, me and my friends are talking, that this was going to be an overarching, interconnected story. 
So, in the normal what if tradition, these stories happen and they're just little twists on a, a path that went a different way. They're making it that, but a connected multiverse story. So at the end of this, you see Doctor Strange from one of the other episodes who destroyed his own universe. So I see where they're going with that. And again, unless you're going to tell me that I'm missing something. Now, you could maybe say there's no direct uh, wording or phrasing that he's using the gems in other reality. So Ultron's a danger enough. I get it. And he's done some insane things. And then Ultron envisions body. Okay, let's up the game. So I get it. He's um, on another level in that sense. Then he gets the gems. The Infinity Stones. And I'm not sure why they're taking out the possibility of other gem holders. Wouldn't he? Wouldn't that be also maybe part of his quest? Knowing that these things made him so powerful that he could breach realities and he sees the multiverse. What about the other gems in the other multiverse, the other universes? Or because this is the, I don't know, maybe they'll call it a prime universe. It has one gauntlet and all the uh, offshoots, all the splinters of uh, different paths don't have them. I, I, you know, so. You know, I'm not sure, and it's, again, my nerd part of me that knows so much about the comic. So, for instance, uh, when Adam Warlock gets the gauntlet in the comic books, and it's explained later at the Council of Entities, that he makes a decision, and the decision is made with utter uh, omnipotence. I mean, really what you're saying, though, is as soon as... Um, Ultron goes into another universe, if there was ever a gauntlet holder, that gauntlet holder knows. And time wouldn't even matter, but that's just me being a nerd and the way I run adventures and I have my own uh, Infinity Gauntlet story going on in my own Marvel universe that we're running right now. I'm using the Roll20 Roll system uh, online. It's been great for the pandemic. Just an awesome way to get people together and kind of free. Well, a friend gifted me a Pro, thank you. But Roll20, check it out. Tabletop role playing. It's got the 5E thing built in. It might not be the best one out there for all the bells and whistles, but it's a free way to get your friends together who are not only around the country, around the world, um, you know, a time where it's hard to get people together in the same room and for hours. And anyway, getting back to the episode What if Ultron won? Really like it. So much fun. Uh, epic storyline that's, you know, cosmic in nature. Again, we're talking about cosmic in nature. Well, I'm, talking, I'm bringing it up. And I'm not seeing a lot of the entities that I would thought I would see. And not even the cosmic level beings. So, even for instance, at, um, what was the last one? Uh, Party Thor. You see the Guardians and stuff, and you see the uh, Elders of the Universe, or, you know, Game Master and uh, the Collector and such. Uh, I don't see that kind of thing. But, again, the heart of the story is um, Black Widow and Hawkeye on this post-apocalyptic Earth that Ultron's destroyed. And he is um, systematically destroying things. He gets... Um, control of, I guess, the, I don't know, it's, I think the hint is this galaxy or the solar system type thing. Um, he's got the gauntlet, and then his perception is opened up, he knows about the multiverse, and he sets on a path to bring order to it. So, on a lot of fronts, uh, I'm really happy about this. I just, those two things, I, I didn't want to see Thanos, you know, Taken out in a split second without some sort of um, indication that Vision is the Vision Ultron, Infinite Vision Ultron is um, capable of it in a sensible way. Uh, you know, you depicted Thanos in the movies and stuff, epic, and even well, the other episode 
that he's in on this is I think the uh, what if T'Challa became uh, Star Lord, and even that I was a little let down in the portrayal of the movies to the cartoon animation is just but Thanos is falling short. I mean, I guess you have to, you know, the way they made it, and it's just something that immediately, and this is happening in the you know beginning of the show. I just was like, ugh, this is just a wasted potential. You missed opportunity to show why and explain how dangerous this infinite Ultron vision is. And then again, I was a little, okay, I'm going with it. Look, I love this stuff. Just trying to be a little bit of critical. And that the theme of the gauntlet, the gems, I think you should have made a limitation on where they were or at least shown it now maybe it's revealed later like i said it's ultron it's ultron in vision's body i get it uh there are storylines that ultron takes over the universe and he, you know it's not the gem that he uses I, I i understand the threat from a deep comic uh history i, I don't know i just wanted a little bit more there you could have all right so for instance uh Ms. Marvel shows up, and there's a battle between them. You could have taken, you know, 15 seconds or 30 seconds out of that battle, which I loved, and shown me that Ultron, in the moment Thanos shows up, computes things in a certain way, and um, there's some kind of exchange. There's no force field blasting each other, and... Um, the only minor nitpick I could think of was, like I said, I love the episode. I'm just trying to point these little things out. The only other thing I could think of is I kind of rolled my eyes when the uh, Watcher ups his, ups his power. Like, you know, I think he just defines it by his will, something that Ultron, you know, whatever. And I know I got the stats on the... Uh, <laughs> The watcher and from the role playing game. <laughs> he ain't standing up against the gauntlet, but I get it, you know, they wanna make it an epic thing. And I like I said, uh from episode to episode, uh, the sound, the music, the animation, the momentum of things, I, I keep saying it's it's a rare thing, I think, to get that all together for me. You know, going through the years i love some animation and what are the strengths and weaknesses of some of these different styles i think they settled in on a really good one that gives it a unique signature a you know telltale sign that you're in this marvel universe the what if universe so i gotta give it props um uh there are a couple of stories so far what is this episode eight so there are a couple of stories that i wasn't just interested in that's fine I, I've explained, you've got a what-if storyline. You know, what if someone went this path, this path? I, mean, I get it. It's going to be things I might not like. But where's Galactus, Silver Surfer, the Heralds? Uh, you know, I, I think um, because Marvel's cinematic universe didn't uh, exploit the opportunity to use them, and... Although I love the first Fantastic Four movie with Jessica Alba and Michael Chiklis, whatever his name is. Uh, the second one didn't do him justice, but I did understand why they said they didn't want to show Galactic. They wanted to give that to someone else. It was the story of the Surfer coming to Earth. Okay. But I don't view the Guardians as the, you know, the cosmic people. It just doesn't work for me. They're just like a spacefaring crew, which is fine. And you didn't really get much of that either, except... You know, Miss Marvel shows up, and it's an epic battle. I mean, these are the things you want to see growing up and uh, being so immersed in it, being a game master who runs the adventures and plays in them. Uh, just to see some of these battles in an the animation is really thrilling. It's uh, something, you know, you've always wanted. So these little things are just things I wouldn't, the decisions I wouldn't have made, you know, in that sense. But... Uh, it's just so enjoyable in, in in the broader context of, you know, 28 minutes uh, you're wrapped in 
you you know you're along for the ride but again i try to weigh in things that are going on in my life and you know the mindset you go in when watching it even recording the podcast so in that case uh i try to be balanced and say look i really like if these two things fucking annoyed me and then uh, that little other third thing okay uh, but great uh, portrayal again i want to give more props to the black widow hawkeye storyline it's pretty good again another nitpick i don't know who decided to give hawkeye a robotic arm but as someone who might be out of the loop and who wrote the episodes and uh, they've done this with green arrow from dc so i don't know if it's a paying homage or a direct ripoff or but there are plenty of cartoon adaptions and as, as a matter of fact in the arrow show legions of Le- tomorrow legends of tomorrow they have this uh which has become a very unknown green arrow from a certain future earth where he has a robotic arm so I found that to be a little, you know, like, uh, I don't know, maybe paying homage. But so, but these things don't make me turn around and scream at the uh, TV or, you know, like, this is garbage. Or I have any um, ill will after the shows. It, it, it's not, that's not happening. Eight episodes, maybe two, I wasn't interested in the story. But, I, you know, I grant it. But the... Uh, effort they're putting in, I think, is showing. I think they were trying something new. This is a concept of hard to get get around. You know, you're telling different stories, trying to connect it with the watcher. And this one, he's prominent. You see him, you see him armor up in a sense, and really have some epic battles. It's just awesome to see. Again, I'm gonna totally recommend the show. If you're not uh, following it, I definitely recommend. Uh, giving some a shot, maybe even checking the synopsis of the episodes, and you might just uh, find one you like. I really like the Mister Murder Mystery one a lot, the first one. Really good series, eight episodes in. What if Ultron won? A couple of nitpicks, but overall, I'm really loving the show. It's on Disney, right? In any case, my best to everybody. I hope you're doing well. Take care.